Epiphany was Sunday, January 7th, 2024. That's a celebration of the arrival of the wise men. Uh, we were at a Sunday evening service, my wife and I, and there was a woman there from Russia, all decked out in Christmas red, maroon, gold. It looked like a regal Christmas outfit. And she said, today is Epiphany. It is our Christmas. I said, oh, that's right, it is. You know what else happened on that day? January 7th, this week. It is the baptism of Jesus that is celebrated. And it was January 7th this year. Now, I know, um, you know, two weeks after Christmas, and oh, I read some, <laughs> I read a couple tiresome uh posts people had christmas is in december 25th and we shouldn't have this and that it's the wrong day it was a pagan holiday put on top of a on the and the christians put their date on top of the saturnalia in rome because it was this non-christian thing and nimrod was the first one to have a christmas tree and i thought oh nimrod 3000 bc genesis 11 he called this tree that he put in his house at the end of the year in the winter he called it a Christ mass tree 3000 years before Christ come on listen to, listen to yourself enjoy christmas i'll talk about the actual date of the real absolute christmas dead on our calendar against the roman calendar the jewish jewish calendar the julian calendar became the gregorian calendar uh, but i'm not going into that right now um but, you know, the dates for all this stuff, they're supposed, they're imposed, they're perfected, they're corrected. And, you know, we just were bungling along and learning what we do. But um, I remember being in Bible college and I got serious in Bible college, winter 1982. I had a class called the Book of John, you know, John who wrote John, one, two, three, John and Revelation. And I learned, <laughs> I learned that Jesus was born in 4 BC. It, it, how can Jesus born be born four years before he was born? So he had a four-year toddler diaper phase, then he ethereally came back. 4 BC, where are the unicorns and the woolly mammoths with snorkels come in? I, 4 BC, how can Jesus be born four years? Well, when Jesus was born is when Jesus was born. The shepherds in the field of wise men, it's all true. What was wrong? Church isn't wrong. Bible's not wrong. Our dating system finally got corrected. And you know when that happened? I didn't know this. There was a massive history forum late during the simultaneous years of World War I. I think it was at the University of Chicago. I'm not positive. But this massive history forum and all these minds textbook after textbook and historical professionals and historians, bona fide PhDs stacked by the, and they all put out all their history charts of everything, matched everything, and they went, we are off by four years. Jesus' birth marks the year of the new year, and they realized that Jesus was not, born in our year zero, there's a mistake in the Gregorian calendar. We're off by four years. So when they adjusted everything, they realized that Jesus was actually born in the numbers that we call 4 BC. So that was the talk. And I thought, oh, okay. So what year is it? They realized they're off about everything, off about the timing of Charlemagne, Abraham, David, Moses, uh, Joan of Arc, even Teddy Roosevelt, president, I think, 1900 and 1908. This forum was 10 years after Teddy Roosevelt was not president anymore. And so they realized they're off by four years. And one thing, because the, the Roman uh, records are so accurate and exhaustive, we know it, we know for certain that Herod was born, uh, Herod died in 4 BC. And this is the Herod that tried to kill baby Jesus. And that's the fact that made the historians go, we're wrong about the date of Jesus' birth. And then just this last decade, I heard for the first time that, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus was born 
And then Herod died two years later, and then Joseph and Mary came back from Egypt. I was in Egypt last winter looking at the room that Joseph and Mary stayed in while they were caring for baby Jesus. The bassinet that baby Jesus was kept in is there under glass with a light on it. 24 hours a day were the light of the world. My skin was crawling. We don't know where he was born in Bethlehem because we didn't declare that it was an issue until the 300s AD, but 60 something years after, the apostle Mark went down to Egypt and told the story of Jesus and an old timer said, I remember that family, they came here, they stayed where, and they, they took him to the room, he said, they stayed right here and they kept that baby Jesus right there in that bassinet, right there. And that bassinet is still there. You can see that in Cairo. I'm going to I'll take you if you want me to. It's uh, fascinating. But Herod dying in 4 BC means Jesus was born in 6 BC. Jesus began his ministry at 30, 24 and 6. I know you struggle with math like me do, like I do, but that's 30, that's, that's 30 years, and Jesus began his ministry at 30 years. So 6 BC plus 2024, 20, Jesus began his ministry at 30 this week, 2,000 years ago. The significance of that is that we have these 2,000-year eras from our time back to Christ, 2,000 years. His ministry began this week, 2,000 years ago. He was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Eat the stones that you turn into bread. Bow down and worship me. Jump off cliffs and the angels will save you. It was a temptation to do that for the devil. When someone asks you to do an exploit, and you go, yeah, here, hold my beer. I'll do it. And the dumbest things on earth get done with <laughs> following that statement. Uh, I don't drink beer, by the way. Um, 2,000 years. Our era, this week, back to Jesus' commencement of ministry, 2,000 years ago. Jesus back to Abraham, 2,000 years. Right in the dead center is King David. Abraham back to Adam and Eve being expelled from the garden. That's 2,000 years. So you have 6,000 years, six millenniums. And the seventh millennium will be what we read in the Bible as the millennium. I know there's all kinds of debate about, oh, there is no millennium. We're in the millennium now. Well, the tribulation was the desecration of the temple, and there is no rapture. There is no this and that. Well, you better have a great big bucket of whiteout and get rid of a lot of passages in the Bible, if that's what you think. I think we better read all the scripture and factor it all in. By the way, the best thing I've ever read on all of this is Keith Bailey's book, Christ's Coming and His Kingdom. And my point of talking to you today is saying, this is so near. Jesus' ministry began 2,000 years ago this week, and it ran until what we call April, because Jesus was crucified, Passover, it, it, it's confirmed. Passover was at the end of April, the year he was crucified. And that was 39 months, period. Interesting, he was in the tomb 39 hours. He was whipped 39 times. His ministry ran 39 months. So 39 months from now, we will be 2,000 years since Jesus was crucified. And I'll try to wrap this up here. Um, part of teaching is learning what's going on in the world and what the scripture says. Uh, NASA and the military have both confirmed that there is something coming in the atmosphere. There's a meteor headed toward this earth. By the way, they know when all the eclipses are, were for the last thousand years, to the minute, they know when all the eclipses are, solar and lunar, for the next thousand years. They know all that right now. And they say there is a collision course coming between Earth and some meteor. And the collision will be April 29th. 
about 39 months from now. And they're positive. They're already talking, shall we send a nuke out there and hopefully blow this thing up? Because it's going to affect the earth. I think. I didn't say God told me. I said, I think that's when the rapture is going to be. It's scheduled to strike earth April 29th, Jerusalem time, 3 p.m. in the afternoon to the minute, 2,000 years since Christ died. Oh, no, don't, oh, no, anything. God has got us. God had Noah's family looked after. God looked after David. God looked after his children. He protects his church. He keeps us. He what? Did you want? We can be at peace at stuff. I remember three years ago, somebody told me, oh, aren't you worried about COVID? They're going to do this and people are going to die and they're poisoning the air and the earth and the water and the plants and their food and they're trying to get us. And what if the food supply, well, well, well um, you know, I got to thinking and I told this person, I said, all right, okay, let's say all the food is poisoned. Um, hunger pains for a few weeks and we go see Jesus. Problem? He said, I will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. In Hebrew, that means perfect peace. Listen to that phrase, perfect peace. I wrote a book this last fall, and it's called The Shalom Path. And when you say shalom, you say to someone, peace be upon you. And that's what he told his church, his people. He told his disciples. He told us to receive the Holy Spirit. When Pentecost hit, that started this new era. And we're very close to the end of that era. As Jesus' ministry commenced 2,000 years ago this week. Did I already say that six times? We come to the end of that 39 months from right now. Be ready. Just do what the Bible tells you to do. Be ready. Fret not, it only leads to evil. And peace be upon you. And I say as I say goodbye today, the Lord bless you and keep you to be continued.